Hey, this is Larry Janeski from Dr. Energy Saver. Well, it's a beautiful September day here and there was a chill in the air this morning and that means winter is right around the corner. As it always does, winter comes and we're getting ready for the heating season. We've done a lot of work to this cape house and now today we're ready to take the next step. We're gonna be air sealing and insulating the attic. A problem that this homeowner was having is ice damming. And in the winter, the snow on this back roof accumulates and the heat that is leaking up into the attic that we paid for, we don't wanna heat the attic or, or heat the outside, but because the, there was air leaks into the attic and the attic is poorly insulated, it would melt the snow underneath and the water would run down underneath the snow and then when it, where it gets to the edge of the roof where it's no longer under the influence of heat from the attic it would refreeze and the snow would be this high but the the ice underneath it would be in a big ridge here and then the water would continue to the, the snow would continue to melt and the water would come down and it would get stuck behind this ridge of ice and go underneath these shingles and leak right down into the house. In fact, uh, several years ago, we had a very snowy winter and the homeowner had water raining down from the uh, uh, kitchen wall and, and through the cabinets. Uh, terrible, terrible situation. And he was up here uh, chiseling uh, notches in the ice. In fact, I believe we have a few pictures that the homeowner provided uh, of this ice damming situation, which you can see here. As you can see, this attic is very typical of uh, millions and millions of American homes under insulated. And these old uh, bats are not nearly enough insulation. We're going to install 17 inches of cellulose insulation in this attic to comply with the current Department of Energy recommendations. And here you can see this old bat is, oh, about two and a half inches uh, thick. And it's also got a lot of gaps in it. We also have ceiling joists, which are uh, uh, thermal breaks in the insulation because uh, there's no insulation here at the wood. So by covering all the ceiling joists, we can uh, make it uh, more efficient that way. Now we have air sealed with foam at the top. Here's an interior wall and then we call this a top plate and we've just put foam along here to stop air from coming between the drywall or plaster and the stud, but uh, we have a wire going down through the uh, a hole in the top of the wall to an electric box. And this is a great illustration of why we need to air seal. You can see that they had just cut a slot in the insulation to put it around that wire. And there was a hole around that wire. They drilled a hole, perhaps three quarters of an inch, and put this, uh, this conduit, which is only about three eighths of an inch through that hole. So we had a gap around that wire and as well as the top plate of the wall. And you can see that the insulation is dirty on the bottom. It's yellow on the top, but it's dirty on the bottom. Why is that? Well, over the years, all the air that leaked out of the house, carrying heat with it that the homeowner paid for, uh, came through that hole and escaped right out into the attic. And the fiberglass was no defense for air leakage whatsoever. It's simply an air filter. In fact, uh, your furnace filter is likely made of fiberglass. And so the air goes right through it and it leaves the dust that came through with that air behind. So the telltale signs of air leakage, dirty insulation. Part of air sealing and insulating an attic is making sure that all the vents, including bath fans, are vented to the outside. It's very common that bath fans just exhaust into the attic, and that's not good because when you put warm, humid air from a shower into a cold attic, you get condensation, mold, and rot, and so forth, even icicles. So in this case, yes, we do have an attic fan that needs to be vented to the outside. So we're gonna drill a four inch hole to run a duct to the outside with a proper hood and the proper butterfly valve so that cold air doesn't descend down that duct into the bathroom when the fan is not running. Here's our bath fan inside. And as you can see, it was never ducted outside. You see all this dirt uh, on top of the insulation. That's from all the dust that came out of the bath fan. And if we move this here, we can see there's our bath fan. Now we have air sealed around this bath fan to the drywall earlier today. Capes typically have knee wall spaces. And when we insulate this attic with cellulose, we are going to stick our hose down that rafter bay 
to insulate that, that rafter bay so that cellulose doesn't just fall into that knee wall space and fill up the knee wall space, which could be used for storage typically, we are going to have to fix the knee wall space. Let me show you the knee wall space as it is now before we fix it. Here's that knee wall space. Now, this insulation represented the thermal boundary of the top of the house. In other words, this space is heated and this is where we want the heat to stop. But you can see all the dirt in this insulation and this represents all the airflow that has been coming through here, uh, leaking out of the house. Um, this is a cape and it doesn't have soffit vents, but there is some leakage around the fascia board, as you can see. So this insulation is poor defense against air leakage, either uh, through the insulation and up into the vented attic or from any leakage or soffit vents that are supposedly venting the roof. So it's a very poor design. So what we're going to do here at Dr. Energy Saver, we do this all the time with knee wall spaces, is we're gonna put board foam on the bottom of the rafters to make this the thermal boundary, but have integrity. So no air can leak out or leak in, and we have uh, insulation with integrity. Now, we have to do that before we insulate the attic because up here, this space right here, our cellulose, when we blow it into the attic, will leak out of uh, these bays and into the knee wall space. So we're gonna have to take care of this knee wall first with board foam and seal it at the top so that when we insulate the attic, uh, we don't have uh, insulation falling into this space. In the end, this knee wall space will be clean. It will stay clean and dust free and it'll be warm in the winter, cooler in the summer, and an appropriate place for the homeowner to store things. Attics are great places for varmints to live, whether it be bees or squirrels or birds or raccoons. And here's an example uh, of a uh, animal <laughs> that I'm not really sure what kind of animal has come in uh, to this uh, attic and just brought all this material and uh, really made a big mess. And uh, so the homeowner would put screens up over these gable end vents and the animals would peck their way or chew their way through anyway. So recently he put this very durable uh, section of shelving, which is, uh, looks to be a pretty good solution. And we're gonna put some screen over here to keep the bees out. But you know, when a squirrel or um, a raccoon comes into an attic, they can make a big mess with their droppings and uh, uh, urinating. And it really, uh, it doesn't sound like much, a little little squirrel, you know, how much of a mess could they make? But it can be significant and uh, uh, not healthy. So uh, Dr. Energy Saver, we have vacuumed attics out, removed all the insulation, vacuumed up all the feces and so forth and start it over with a nice clean attic. Now we're blowing cellulose insulation. Cellulose is recycled newspaper and there's two things that are added to the recycled newspaper. There's a borate which is a uh, mineral that's mined out of the ground like salt and borate is actually added to eyewash so it's very safe and what the borate does is it prevents bugs from eating the cellulose and it prevents mold from growing on the cellulose should it become wet temporarily or uh, so it's very safe and there's a fire retardant also added to it you can hold a torch to this cellulose insulation our true soft cellulose insulation and it will not burn so it's absolutely amazing and it gives us a great r value 3.7 per inch and in this case we're going to ensure that there is R60 insulation when we're all done with this attic, and that would be a total of 17 inches of insulation. It is a bit dusty, but uh, once the dust settles, this is the best insulation out there for your attic. Much better than fiberglass. It has a better R value, and fiberglass bats have all these gaps and so forth in them. Blown fiberglass is okay, but it doesn't have the R value that cellulose has. Cellulose has R 3.7 per inch, Blown fiberglass has R3.0 per inch. And cellulose is a little denser too, so it uh, uh, is a little bit more resistant to airflow, even though we've air sealed the attic floor. We would never insulate without air sealing the attic floor. Okay, now we have these slopes, which are very common in, in uh, Cape Cods. 
where we have a flat attic ceiling, then we have a slope, then we have a vertical knee wall, and uh, it is not vented, and we, we have gable end vents, and we're gonna fill this cavity, which is a ceiling in some of these rooms, a sloped part of the ceiling, with cellulose. And you know, you can see even in the bays that have fiberglass bats that there's air space in those bats and it's ineffective. So we're gonna fill the balance of those spaces with cellulose. So I'm gonna stick my hose down this cavity and stick it quite a distance. There, that bay is full. Nobody said it was easy. And here's another attic. We call this the devil's triangle. <laughs> in a cape where you have just a little bitty attic and then slopes on the left and right. And I've got to go in there all the way back with this cellulose hose and this control and crawl in there where no man has gone before. <laughs> and I'm going to be blowing cellulose and working my way back. I'm going to blow it into the rafter slopes and the roof on the back and the front and then the flat and work my way back out. Uh, it's difficult, but it's going to make a big difference for the homeowner. What I'm doing is insulating this little attic and the roof on either side. The flat part of the attic goes down to about halfway down this slope, and then it's rafter bay slopes from there, and I've, I'm sticking the cellulose hose down those rafter bays and insulating them. And the flat part of the roof on this side, the flat part of the attic floor, goes to about here and there's just a little slope and I've stuck my cellulose hose down those slopes and insulated all the way to the fascia board to blanket the top of this part of the house. Slope, flat and slope with cellulose insulation. Well, all the effort was worth it. The attic came out beautiful. That cellulose is a warm blanket covering the entire top of this house. The last thing we're going to do on the way out of the scuttle hole is to build a plywood dam to contain the insulation so it doesn't fall uh, out the scuttle hole when you open the hatch. Then we're going to build a little door that sits on a little frame around the perimeter of the opening with weather stripping and four inch foam on top of the door so that we have uh, integrity to our thermal boundary. Even at the door we have uh, adequate insulation. Now this house is very energy efficient with all the things we've done to it and this homeowner will be more comfortable and have lower bills forever and ever. And this particular homeowner feels very good about that. If you have a home that you'd like to make more comfortable and energy efficient and save money because these repairs and these upgrades pay for themselves, call Dr. Energy Saver. We'd love to help you.